Hi, my name's David. Today we're going to change the raw water impeller on your raw water pump. I change mine about every 18 to 24 months. Uh, some of that depends upon how much you use your boat, uh, but you want to change it before any of those impeller blades break and get loose in your cooling system. So I'll start by showing you the parts we need. Okay, this is the uh, impeller blade for my raw water pump. You'll have to make sure that uh, you've gotten the correct one for your, for your pump. You'll also need a screwdriver, flat-bladed screwdriver, and a pair of needle-nose pliers, and some rags, and it doesn't hurt to have some uh, plastic containers to catch water because we'll be emptying the, um, the raw water cooling part of your engine. We're going to be doing this on a uh, Ford Lehman, but it doesn't really matter the make of the engine. Uh, I, we've got a Japsco raw water pump and uh, so any any engine, any marine engine that has a, a Japsco pump will be similar to, to what we've got here. Okay, <clears throat> my raw water pump is located in the starboard side of my engine up forward. Uh, you can see it here. And you can also see access to it is blocked by this uh, intake hose here, uh, this Trident Flex. So I'm going to remove that. Before we do that, before we disconnect that, close any and all seacocks to your raw water system. So I'm going to do that and then disconnect this hose. So you can just see the yellow handle on my raw water intake petcock. I just closed it. And then I've got a... Um, small intake hose back on the drive shaft here by the stuffing box so I closed it also. Before I disconnect that raw water hose I'm going to drain the raw water out of this heat exchanger so that there's less water I have to contend with when I take the cover off of the raw water pump. So on this particular heat exchanger it's the far left drain plug at the bottom that you'll disconnect. It, different for every heat exchanger so you'll just have to check your manual and see where the raw water drain plug is on your heat exchanger. Okay I'm just draining the water into this small pail and then dumping it into a bigger bucket. There's not a lot but there's I don't know a quart or more one or two quarts I would guess and then once uh, it seems like it's empty then uh, reinsert the plug put some Teflon tape on it or some sort of sealant um, so that it seals well. Okay, we've drained the heat exchanger and I've reinserted that plug, put some Teflon tape on it and reinserted it. On mine it's a 9 16th wrench. I don't know uh, what it will be on yours, but on this one it's a 9 16th wrench. Okay, now we're going back up to the raw water pump. Shove some rags underneath it because you'll undoubtedly spill a little bit of water as we disconnect this hose. It's not a bad idea to have uh, some plugs available so that we can plug this the end of this hose back up. Even though we've got the petcock closed, uh, it still leaks a little bit of water sometimes. So I would shove a plug in there and uh, then you don't have to worry about it. So just get a flat bladed screwdriver and loosen up this clamp here and you'll just pull that hose right off. It'll come off real easily. Okay, I removed the hose, plugged it. And now you have much better access to the plate you need to remove on the back of that raw water pump. Uh, you can just barely see it there. So next step is get your flat bladed screwdriver and remove about six screws on the back of this plate. And uh, you remove those. Have a rag underneath it so if you drop the screws you don't lose them and uh, that's all there is to it, just remove those screws. Okay, I'm trying to give you a better view of that plate. You can see it a little bit better there. And you can see why you gotta get that hose out of the way. It's a son of a bitch if you don't remove that hose. So just take those four screws off and take the plate off. Okay, remove that. we've removed that cover plate and you can see the impeller in there. Good idea to have a can or canister underneath it because there'll be some water dripping and have some rags. So now we're going to work on pulling that impeller blade out. 
take a pair of needle nose pliers and grab one of the veins and just pull on it and you'll have to work around it won't come off easily so just uh, pull on various veins pulling straight out okay it is not easy to get out oftentimes you just got to keep circling around it pulling on those veins and it will eventually come out you can see it's it's starting to come out but uh, it can sometimes be a bit difficult Okay, that did not come out very easily. It was a real son of a bitch. But it'll, it always eventually comes out. There's also a uh, paper gasket you'll notice. Just remove that. And now we'll uh, go about installing the new one. Okay, here's the new blade on the bottom. Old blade in the top. And notice on the top one, the old one, the direction of the veins. That's exactly as it was when it was in the housing. So, when you install the new one, try to turn it or position it so that those veins are flexed the same way that those are. That's not real critical, but if you can do that, it's a good idea. Before you go to insert that new impeller blade, not a bad idea to take some silicone grease and smear it on the lines of the impeller, the metal part that goes on the the spines of the pump and also on the blades it'll make it go in a lot more easily once you've pushed the impeller blade back into the pump you'll find in the kit that came with the impeller a black rubber plug of sorts it just simply nests right in the center of the impeller so just install that okay in the impeller kit you'll find the paper gasket and some what I'm sure is silicon grease that they supply so smear that on both sides of this gasket and uh, then position it on the inside of the cover with one of the screws and then start putting that cover on. Make sure all your surfaces are clean. They don't have to be dry, but they have to be clean, free of any grit or anything. Okay, so I found that that Japsco supplied grease was too watery, so I'm just using silicon grease. It's much thicker. It's easier to work with. So put it on both sides of that paper gasket, position the gasket in position on the cover, and then get one of the screws to uh, position this into place. Okay, get those screws on, snug them up, don't go berserk, they are just brass. Snug them up, and uh, now we're going to attach this, uh, the hose that we disconnected. Before you disconnect the hose, take a rag and make sure that the uh, this fitting is, is clean, that there's no crud or grunk gunk on it. Then just uh, slip the hose on and tighten up the hose clamp. Okay, the hose is back on. We've snugged up the hose clamp. Open your any pet cocks that you closed and then go ahead and start the engine and make sure you got raw water coming out of your exhaust like it should. That's it. Uh, easy peasy and uh, Important to do because the last thing you want is one of those impeller blades breaking off and clogging your cooling system. Okay, good luck.